Now let's take a look at some common circuits based solely on sequential storage devices. So sequential logic is going to give us uh, the ability to, to create complex digital systems. But you can build a, a handful of really useful uh, circuits based just on the sequential storage devices themselves. And what we're talking about is primarily the uh, deep flip-flop. So let's take a look at a, a circuit that is known as a toggle flop. And the toggle flop looks like this. It is when you are going to take a D flip flop and you are going to take the Q bar output, or Q naught, and you're going to route it back to the D input. So when you look at the toggle flop, this is, this is a toggle flop, and there is no D input now. So you've wired this, you've manually wired it in there. So you could actually draw kind of a box around this and say, okay, what is, you know, what is this look like? And it's like, well, if I, if I drew it again, you could actually, some people draw the symbol like this. You have clock, and then you just say T right there, and then you have Q, and you have Q bar. And so there is no input pin coming into it because the data is already wired. So what does the behavior of this look like? Well, let's say that, let's draw the timing diagram of this. And let's say that our clock came along. And it's going to come along. And this is a rising edge triggered D flip flop. So I've got, let's do just you know, two or three clock edges here. And let's say that we began by having Q and Q bar. So we hit the reset line on this and it set Q to a zero. And Q bar was then, of course, the inverse of that, and it was at a one. So we're sitting at a zero right here, and we're sitting at one right there. <clears throat> so what we're interested in is what happens at the triggering clock edge? Well, we come along, and we are going to update Q with the new value, or whatever value is on D. However, D is wired to Q naught. So we can actually come over here and say, well, D is equal to QN. So whatever QN was at this rising edge of a clock is going to be transferred over and stored on Q. So that means QN is equal to a 1. That means there's a 1 sitting at the input, at the D input of the D flip-flop when I clock it. So Q is going to be updated to a 1. So it will go to a 1. And then QN is then going to be the inverse of that. So it will go down, and now you have a transition. So this will actually transition on a clock edge. So when is the next transition going to occur? So when is the output updated again? Well, it turns out it's updated at the rising edge of a clock. So let's go over here and see what value I'd have. Well, what, when we get to this moment in time, we're going to look at what is on D. Well, D is now containing a 0, because that's what's on QN. So we're going to update Q with a 0. So that is going to then transition down to a 0. And then QN, Q bar, will transition to the opposite of Q, and you will do this. So look at what's happening. I'm transitioning, and it turns out that I will transition every rising edge of a clock. So if I drew this out for, let's do one more clock edge right here. What happens is that you notice every rising edge of a clock, I will transition, or said another way, I will toggle back and forth. So that's where the toggle flop came, comes from, is every event, every triggering edge, causes the output to toggle. Okay? So this is a, it's a very useful circuit uh, for a, a number of reasons. So the first reason that this is useful is, look at what I'm doing here. This is a clock divider. Notice that the clock right here has a period that is defined as T. But notice what the period of the output wave is. Well, the period, period is defined as like edge to like edge. So in reality, if I, if I looked at what the period of this would be, I'd go rising edge here to rising edge here. Notice that it is exactly 2t. So I've actually doubled the period of this. And then frequency is equal to 1 over period. So if I had a uh, an associated frequency here. Well, when I double the period, that corresponds to having the frequency. So I divided the frequency. So this is a divide by two clock divider. 
So you can use these to, if you had a 50 megahertz clock and you only wanted a 25 megahertz clock, you could put a toggle flop in there, which is simply a D flip flop with the Q bar output wired back to D, and you can divide it down. Now a really, a really nice uh, behavior of a toggle flop is that it can clean up a clock and give you a 50% duty cycle. So what I mean by that is consider, consider this. Let's say that I had a clock that looked like this. So I had a clock that it didn't have a 50% duty cycle. It had something like this. It was just this little, little blip every once in a while. And the duty cycle is defined as the high time divided by the period. So we say the duty cycle is the high time, and we'll go T high over the period. So when you have a perfect square wave, you're high for 50% of the time, and then you're low for 50% of the time. So the duty cycle is 50%. So you're 50% of the T right here, and 50% of the T there. So a perfect square wave has a 50% has a duty cycle. However, in something like this, like let's say a clock that was coming out of a crystal and it was kind of, it didn't have a perfect duty cycle, then you would say, well, you know what? I want to clean this up. This maybe only has a 25% a duty cycle, and I don't like that. And one of the reasons you might not like that is because you can't have too small of a pulse on your clock because the D flip flop won't recognize it. So if you just if you had like a little clock that was like this, you know, it's going to go, geez, you weren't even high long enough for me to recognize that I should have stored the D to Q. So we come along, and if you think about what the output of this would be, if I look at Q, it is going to transition every time you have a rising edge of a clock. So let's say it transitions there. Okay, so it went from a zero to a one. And then it's gonna hold that value until the next rising edge of a clock. Well, it turns out that that is then gonna be over here, and that's gonna be over here. And since it only is sensitive to one of these edges, it doesn't care what the duty cycle of the incoming clock is. It's gonna produce exactly a 50% duty cycle. So you not only divide the clock down but, and get half the frequency, you get a perfect 50% duty cycle. So toggle flops are used very commonly to, in clock divider circuits in order to clean them up, to clean up the clock cycle. Okay, so there's one, there's one consideration when you do a toggle flop uh, that we need to think about. So if I look at what's happening here, I have this toggle flop and I also have knowledge that I can't violate any of the specifications of the device, okay? And I know that I have to meet set up, hold, set up and hold, or else I'll go metastable. Well, one of the problems is that QN arrives at D very, very quickly, okay? So when you clock this, there's no logic in here. It's just a really short wire, so it's like instantaneously over at D. So we have a situation where if I had the clock, let's say that this was the clock, and this was Q and Q bar, and we said, okay, this is going to transition here, and draw that in red so it's a little easier to see. So this is going to transition here, and this is going to transition here, and you say, well, that's D. You have a, a big problem because it's arriving so close to the clock edge, you violated your setup and hold specification, okay? So this is, this is a bad thing. However, in a real D flip-flop, one of the things you gotta remember is that there's actually propagation delay within the D flip-flop itself. So this is not actually an accurate drawing of what it looks like. Let's, let's draw a more realistic one. Let's put Q and Q bar in here. Really what's gonna happen is that after the triggering clock edge, there is going to be a T clock to Q delay which then has the delay of this, so the triggering clock edge was there, over there, and the triggering clock edge was here. So the, the transition does not happen instantaneously. So now this is important because this is D right here. So what we were really worried about is having the transition on D occur too quickly, and we didn't want to violate the hold time. So if we allowed it to transition instantaneously and arrive back here, what we did is we changed D too quickly after the clock edge. Well, what we had though is that it didn't, it didn't transition until T clock to Q. 
So in reality, as long as t clock to q is greater than or equal to t hold, then we don't have a hold violation because the output on q will actually be inherently, q and qn will be inherently held. So it's actually going to hold it for a t clock to q before it comes out and then is in almost instantaneously put back to d. So we can actually ignore a hold time spec or a hold time violation in a t flop as long as the clock to q is less than or excuse me greater than or equal to the hold time. And it turns out in modern devices, uh, modern d flip flops, the hold time is really small. And the reason is is if you think about you change the input. Okay, so you change. You have the input, let's, where is it? So right here. So you have a one on the input to the D flip flop. You have a one right there. And it comes along, you've actually kind of set all the transistors in there to this value, charged up all the transistors in there, so that when you take it away, there's going to be a finite amount of time where that signal is actually dropping down. So it actually doesn't occur instantaneously, it's more like that. And it actually gives it just a little bit of time where it's still considered a logic high that it can do its work. So modern D flip-flops have very small hold times. And in fact, they, there are devices, the really cutting edge ones actually will have a negative hold time, meaning that you could have a situation where if your clock was like this, your data would be coming in like this. And let's say you were at a, at a uh, zero and you were in transition. You have the setup time here. So you, have, you meet the setup time. So that's the setup time. And then the hold time would be negative. So the hold time would be like negative something x seconds and you could actually transition before the clock edge and it would still be able to latch that in as a logic one okay but this is just a timing consideration of a toggle flop toggle flops are very common they're used to uh, divide down clocks or they're, they're used to clean up clocks you have 50 percent duty cycles but there's a, just one timing consideration that you have to remember and that is the t clock to q has to be greater than or equal to the hold time or else you'll have a violation you'll have a hold time violation so that's it.